congratulations on your purchase of an East Bay Composites carbon fiber fabrication kit. In this video, we're going to be showing you how to use the layup technique to make your parts out of carbon fiber. To make a part, you're going to need a mold. We're going to use this mold of an electrical switch plate that we made in the mold making instructional video. First thing you have to do is apply the mold release wax. Apply a thin coat to the entire surface of the mold. This mold wax will ensure that your part will separate from the mold easily. Next we're going to apply the PVA mold release agent. This agent further ensures that your part will separate nice and easily. With a soft cloth, apply a very thin coat to all surfaces of the mold. Be sure not to let any excess PVA accumulate in the corners of the mold. When dry, the PVA will leave a nice shiny coat to your mold. While optional, it's a good idea to level your mold. Start by putting some clay on the bottom side of your mold. If you made your mold with the East Bay Composites mold making kit, the clay that came with it is perfect for this purpose. Now press the mold and the clay down onto your work surface to make it nice and flat. Now using a small level, use it in both directions of the mold to make sure the mold surface is nice and level. Now to accurately mix your epoxy resin, you're going to need a gram scale. They're available on our website and also on other internet stores. The first thing you want to do is weigh your empty mixing cup. In this example, the cup weighs 7.8 grams. Now pour in your epoxy resin. Now you only want enough to apply a thin coat to the surface of your mold. Now in this example, the combined weight of our cup in epoxy resin is 19.6 grams. Now it's time to do some math. The first thing we need to do is determine the weight of the epoxy resin that's in the cup. To do this, we take the 19.6 gram combined weight of the cup in the resin and subtract the weight of the empty cup, which is 7.8 grams. That leaves 11.8 grams as the weight of the resin in the cup. Now to determine the amount of hardener we need, we simply take the 11.8 grams and multiply it times 50% or 0.5. In this example, 50% of 11.8 grams is 5.9 grams of hardener. So we simply take the 5.9 grams, add it to the 19.6, and get a total weight of 25.5 grams. So with a cup of resin on the scale, we simply add enough hardener so the total weight comes up to the 25.5 grams. Now before you mix your epoxy, remove any loose bristles from your brush. Now it's time to mix your epoxy resin and the hardener. Use a brush to mix very thoroughly, but not too vigorously because this will add bubbles. Now it's time to apply a thin layer of epoxy to the surface of your mold. You may notice as you're applying the epoxy that it tends to pull away from the surface of your mold. This is the mold release agents doing their job. So be sure to apply enough epoxy so everything is wet. Now as an option, if you have a heat gun or a hair dryer, you can use this at a very low setting to help remove some of the bubbles from your epoxy. But this is not required. Now you want to set the mold aside and allow the epoxy to get tacky. Tacky means that if you touch the epoxy, it still will be soft, but no epoxy will come off on your finger. If your work area is between 70 and 75 degrees, this should take about an hour and 15 minutes. But this is just a guide, so be sure to check your surface often. Now while you're waiting for the epoxy to set up, this is a good time to measure and cut your carbon fiber fabric.
treat it very gently because it will unravel very easily. It's also a good idea to wear gloves and a face mask. And while carbon fiber dust is not dangerous, it can cause skin irritation and itching. Now that your epoxy is tacky, it's time to apply the carbon fiber fabric. Carefully center your fabric over the top of the mold and begin to press down into the epoxy. You want to be sure you have everything set up right before you start pressing because once the carbon fiber touches the epoxy, it's not going to come up again. Use your fingertips to make sure the carbon fiber gets into all the nooks and crannies of your mold. While we're not doing it here, it is a good idea to wear gloves when doing this. Once you have the fabric pressed down into the mold and you're happy with the results, now it's time to apply another layer of epoxy. So mix up a fresh batch and start applying another thin coat. Just as a hint, if you keep your brushes that are soaked with epoxy in the refrigerator, the epoxy won't harden for quite some time. Now you don't want to put too much epoxy on this layer, just enough to have it soak through the fabric, but not pool on top. Once you're done, set it aside, let the epoxy get tacky. Now that the epoxy is tacky, just repeat the same process over again. Put on another layer of carbon fiber and press it into all the corners. Once you're satisfied with the placement of that second layer of carbon fiber, Yet again, put on another coat of epoxy. And again, you want to make sure you have enough epoxy to soak through the layers, but not excessively pool on the top. Now for many parts, this may be the last step. All you have to do now is set it aside, let it cure overnight, and then demold. But we're going to show you how, if you're looking for a little extra strength, you could add yet a third layer of the fiberglass fabric that came with your kit. This third layer will add extra strength by making the part thicker, but you won't have to use up the expensive carbon fiber cloth. Using the fiberglass is the same as using the carbon fiber. Carefully place the fiberglass on top of the epoxy once it's got tacky and press it into all the corners. Once you're satisfied with the placement of the fiberglass, put on your final coat of epoxy. Now just set it aside overnight and let the epoxy cure. Now that the epoxy has had a chance to cure overnight, now it's time to remove the part from the mold. Just lift up on one edge of your part, hear it separate, and the part will just fall right out of the mold. Next you want to trim your new carbon fiber part. There are many ways to do it, but a Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel works really well. Here we're using a utility knife to cut out the hole in the center of the switch plate. Now your part is done, but it's missing that high gloss shine. To give it that shine, we're going to use some automotive clear coat acrylic available at any auto parts store. Remember, you must wear gloves and a respirator when using this acrylic spray. It's nasty. Follow the directions on the can, but don't be afraid to give it an extra thick coat. After your last spray, the part should have a very high gloss shine. So set your part aside overnight. And when you come back, you're going to have a beautiful carbon fiber part. Congratulations.